Welcome to topic two of chapter six. In this topic, we're going to talk all about DNA repair. This topic should be a little bit shorter than the other one, and topic three will be a little bit longer as well. So topic two should be a nice little break for you in the middle of this. As I said, we're going to talk all about DNA repair, and so we have three main objectives. As always, these are what I expect you to have mastered coming out of this chapter. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you need to work um, on any of these a little bit more together. So we have three or four main sections we're going to talk about with this. We're going to talk about the result of mutations. We're going to talk about mismatch repair system. We're going to talk about the constant rate of DNA damage. And then we're going to talk about the stability of these genes and DNA repair. So we know that mutations can happen. We talk about them a lot in the semester. And we know that some organisms, such as flu viruses, will mutate really quickly. And this is because their DNA is only single-stranded, and so it can happen a little bit faster. We have double-stranded DNA, which is a nice little fail-safe, and we'll talk about how we repair that here in a second. But let's first of all define mutation. And mutation is a randomly produced heritable change. So this is where we have something that happened, and it's going to be, it potentially could be passed to the next generation. And so it's really important that we have, that we understand that definition. And as we have keep talking about, mutations can either create global issues, such as even incompatibility with life, or they can be silent so that we never even know they're being passed along. And that's actually a big topic of discussion right now, but uh, about the genome projects, is what are, what mutations matter and what mutations don't, because we're all so variable that we have these small changes within our genome, and we just need to, we don't know the range of these changes. So we have a, a mismatch repair system. This is how we detect our first line. This is the biggest defense we have. And what you can see here in the mismatch repair system is there's a bunch of outcomes what happens if we don't necessarily repair the, the um, air correctly. So if we don't have a repair at all, you can see over here in A, the newly synthesized strands so will go into the next round of DNA and we'll have one that is an AT, where it should have been a CG before, and we'll have one with the correct one. And so we have the unchanged and the mutated one. And depending on how big this changes, it could be a problem, but this then the, the mutated strand will then read normally. It's not going to have that um, indent out into the environment to be caught by the repair system. So it's really important that we understand that. And that that's how these base pair mismatches are recognized. So they're recognized by the shape of the background backbone. If there's something that's jumping out or sticking in, that's how we can tell. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. However, the, um, in correcting these errors, they can sometimes correct the wrong error. So what you can see here is in B, what happens is this, the um, the bottom, the template strand, is then replaced. So instead of an, um, a G, we're going to then have a T put on the bottom. And so this is then passed on to the next round. So now we have an entirely two new strands that are mutated. Now if we correct the actual one that's broken, we can fix it and so both of them are unchanged going forward. So you can see how there's a lot of problem, um, a lot of room for error when these issues happen. So we got to make sure we fix them properly, and I'll show. We'll talk a little bit about how that works here in just a little bit. But it's really important that we understand just the ramifications and how this can easily be passed on. So there's three types of three main types of DNA damage: depurination, deamination, and UV radiation. And I'm going to talk about each of these in the next three slides. First of these is depuration, purination. And what happens is DNA is moving around just like every other molecule in the cell. And what will happen is sometimes when they bang into each other, the DNA will lose a purine. So it just disappears, the A will just disappear. Now because we have the parent strand, the one half of the new semi-conserved molecule will be fixed. They'll put the A back in, we know what we're doing, we're going on for just fine. But the problem is, is that the mutated strand will actually have the whole pair deleted. And this can cause a frame shift change. So it's really important that we understand that this could be a big difference, a big problem. And this is something that can just occur within the cells as, they, as DNA molecules bang into each other. So if we lose this guanine or adenine, it's really important that we understand that that can have pretty big changes. Or, you know, they can be silent, but given that frame shift change, it's more likely to have a bigger impact than not. Another option is deamination, and this can occur when cytosine bases just randomly lose their amino group, and what happens then is this base becomes a uracil, and what happens with that is that the 
G, it will then be turned into an A because the, uh, the repair system doesn't know how to read that properly. We'll also, once again, because it's double-stranded, have half that is uh, unchanged, but still this can be passed on. The good news is that this doesn't cause a frame shift like I was just talking about with the other, um, with the depurination, but it's still important to recognize deamination. One of the biggest things we talk about is DNA damage, and we know that has a huge role in skin cancer. And this can happen through chemicals or even UV radiation in our environment. And this will create thymine dimers. And this is this is a really problematic um, DNA damage issue. What happens is the thymine groups will actually find uh, will covalently bond to each other. And what this does is even though it could cause problems in replicate or um, with reading the strand, what actually has problems is it forms a roadblock preventing DNA replication. And so this can happen is the, si the cell will signal for um, apoptosis to occur and eventually that could lead to a lethal problem if there's enough of it or even in skin cancer um, examples it can lead to weird fixes that lead to um, uncontrolled growth within the cell. So it's, this is exactly what happens when people are talking about the tanning beds and why you shouldn't lay on them, as well as some other things as well. But this is one of the thiamine dimers that we always worry about. So preventing all these disastrous result or problems are exactly what our cells are designed to do. And there's a couple different processes that will do that. We have DNA mismatch repair proteins that help recognize when there's this mismatch. And either there, as I said, there's a bulge or an indent within the DNA typically. And what it'll do is it'll actually remove the damaged segments and then have DNA polymerase and DNA ligase come in and fix it. We also have um, a different or a different protein called nucle nucleases that will go in and recognize the single pair or the single base pair issue, remove the damaged base pair or damaged base, and then DNA polymerase and DNA ligase will come in and fix it. So there's a couple different processes here, but what this really all comes back to is how important the stability of our genes are in keeping our species the way it is and helping create the evolutionary pathways we've talked about. And this is really how evolution is always um, is driven, is through the fidelity of genomes. If there's less fidelity, there's a bigger change, and that's how viruses and bacteria will uh, mutate and change as quickly as they do, is because there's less of a especially with viruses since they're single strand, less of a repair and a proof checking mechanism. Whereas in DNA, we have that other strand that we can always use as a, che as a checkpoint to make sure that we have it right. So this is the end of topic two. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know and make sure you review those objectives about um, the topics we've talked about here.